Hello, welcome to Jason the Old Millennial. My name is Jason. I'm speaking to you here in my basement in the great state of Kansas. And in this video, I'm continuing my uh, list of uh, top 20 favorite movies of the 1960s. Um, so far, I've covered number 20 through number 11. So I'm now getting to the top 10. I'm going to do number 10 through number 6 on my list um, this decade. And so the first movie I have on here at number 10, the only movie uh, I have a DVD of uh, currently, and that is a Disney movie, Swiss Family Robinson. There. Um, came out in 1960. Uh, stars John Mills, Dorothy McGuire, James MacArthur, Janet Munro, and Tommy Kirk. Um, like I said, it's, uh, it's a good family uh, Disney classic where this family is stranded on an island and they, try, tr they make do with what they got and waiting for rescue or they don't know if rescue is ever going to come and so they venture some on the island and then they get attacked by pirates at the end of the movie and then the, finally uh, um, the British because they're, they're British uh, or they're from England and so finally uh, English like Navy boat comes and rescues them at the end um, but yeah it's a great uh, you know movie where uh, I love the use of how do you survive on the island. Um, they make this really cool tree house. It's really cool. I love the set decoration of this tree house that they make. And you kind of see them surviving the wild there in this jungle. Um, a girl, they find a girl who uh, is captured by the pirates and they rescue her. And then there's a love triangle between two of the brothers um, that excuse because of that. Um, and then the favorite part is probably at the end, the pirates are coming to attack them, so they have to booby trap the island, and that's a really fun scene with um, the, them fending off, defending the pirates, just this family. Anyway, so yeah, just a really good family adventure film, I think, Swiss Family Robinson, number 10. Number 9 is uh, West Side Story, uh, came out in 1961, uh, really big popular musical. Um, directed by Robert Rise and Jerome Robbins, <clears throat> one best picture that year. Uh, starred Natalie Wood, Richard Boehmer, George Chakiris, uh, Russ Tamlin, and Rita Marino. <clears throat> uh, like I said, I, I'm a fan of musicals. It's definitely one of the big musicals of that decade. Like I said, um, a lot of great songs. Um, Somewhere, um, I love Oster Kroenke is a great one. But America, uh, um, when you're a jet, you're a jet, you know, all those songs. And also the, what's even better is the uh, dance choreography is really unique and uh, really good. And love the whole scene in the, after the, the battle where two people, where two people get murdered and uh, two, the gangs are fighting and uh, two people get murdered during the, or get killed fighting. And then we have like the aftermath and what are we gonna do and and they sing the song like in a it looks like a kind of like a garage or something uh, like a big parking garage and they're uh, I love the camera movements as they're kind of dancing and oh chum pow ooh bah, and they like do these movements uh, very fun yeah overall music is really great of course um, it's kind of a take on Romeo and Juliet with a the um, sharks and jets, which one is, uh, I guess, white Americans. The other ones are Latinos, and are, I forget what country they're from. They're from like Cuba or Dominican Republic or something. Uh, no, Puerto Rican. They're Puerto Rican. They're Puerto Rican, uh, a gang, and so it's these two races fighting against each other. And so it's about you know two people, of course, like Romeo and Juliet, from two different you know gangs that you know shouldn't you know be together and they get one guy from one falls in love with the girl from the other and it's forbidden but they're in love and all that stuff anyway so you know it's a typical story uh has a very sad ending to it but uh very emotionally powerful at the same time and yeah so it's a classic number nine west side story number eight another classic musical um the sound of music i have uh from 1965 also directed by Robert Rice, so Robert Rice directing uh, two Best Picture musicals here, uh, back to back on my list. Um, it stars, of course, Julie Andrews as the main, and Maria, the sister, 
uh, who comes to um, be kind of a caretaker of the children um, of Christopher Plummer's character, who's in the army or in the navy, uh, and they're in uh, Austria, I believe. Uh, anyways, and um, obviously it's musical. It's everybody knows this musical. It's on TV all the time. At least when I was growing up, it seems like it was on TV a lot. So I've seen it so many times. Um, obviously, I think it's a little long, I would say. I wish it was a little shorter. I'd say the first half is really, really good, though. Um, especially the very beginning with the Austrian uh, out mountains are just so beautiful. That scenery shot, those helicopter shots are so gorgeous. Um, and then going to Julie Andrews singing, you know, the hills are alive on top of a mountain. Uh, really wonderful starting shot to the movie. One of the best probably starting shots to any movie. Um, but I love her whole thing with her and, you know, leaving the, the abbot, whatever, the covenant, whatever, the, um, the sisters, the habit, yeah. Uh, problem like Maria, and then she gets to the, the manor or whatever and, you know, learns her role as like this uh, nanny caretaker person to these kids. And then I love the scene where she takes them out and does a do-re-mi. It's such a great sequence and a lot of great scenery in that one too. But it's a really iconic song and I love how they edit all that. Um, and then you get the, you know, uh, these are a few of my favorite things, a great song. Uh, anyways, so that first half is just absolutely um, really great. One of the best um, music-wise, I think. And Julie Andrews gives such a great performance. I think she should have won the Oscar for this one. She ended up winning the Oscar for another movie I, I have on my list, uh, Mary Poppins, that came out at number 11 on my list. Uh, the year before this one, 1964, she won the Oscar for Best Actress for Mary Poppins. Um, but she really should have won the Oscar for this one, but she already won, so she didn't win for this one. But uh, Julie Andrews definitely gives, I think, the best performance of her career in this and does a really, really good job. Christopher Fulmer is also very excellent, I think, um, in this in this part. and. Uh, I love his Edelweiss song, you know, it's very emotional, I think. Anyway, so yeah, definitely got to put this one somewhere in here. I put it at number eight, the Sound of Music. Number seven, I have uh, more of a comedy uh, drama called The Apartment. It came out in 1960. Uh, it was the Best Picture winner of that year. Um, directed by Billy Wilder, who uh, was one of the great directors of that period. He did a lot of comedy dramas. Uh, Star Jack Lemmon, one of my favorite actors. Uh, you got Shirley MacLaine, uh, Fred McMurray, and Ray Walston, um, amongst other actors. Uh, Fred McMurray being the bad guy, which is weird because I always think of him as absent minded professor. So it's weird seeing him as this terrible um, boss who's cheating on his wife with the Shirley MacLaine character. And uh, the whole movie, the part is Jack Lemmon is single, and uh, to get ahead in his business, he um, lets the, his bosses, the people higher up, use his apartment to have uh, f uh, have affairs. Anyway, so they bring women to his apartment. So, you know, they have to bring him somewhere. They can't bring him to their house. Uh, so they have to bring him somewhere. So they use his apartment to have these uh, affairs anyways. And so he does that just so he can get promoted in the business. And he falls in love, or he's in kind of love with Sherman McLean, who um, runs an elevator or there's an elevator girl there, and but she's in, she's kind of having an affair. She is having an affair with, a, with Fred McMurray, who's like the, the main boss of the company. And so it's like, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a love triangle, but Jack Lemmon doesn't know that, you know, that's happening, and he's trying to date her. And, of course, Fred McMurray is married, so Shirley McLean's depressed because Fred McMurray won't leave his wife. And so the drama comes with her because she actually even tries to commit suicide in the movie, which is pretty dark. Um, but Jack Lemmon saves her, actually, and, uh, kind of takes her and, um, gets her to the hospital or whatever, or gets a doctor, actually gets a doctor to come down and, uh, help her, and so she doesn't uh, overdose on pills, and he kind of rehab it, uh, rehabilitates her, kind of, um, after that, and yet, he loves her, but yet there's this thing where... She still loves the uh, Fred McMurray character, even though she shouldn't because he's a jerk. Um, so there's a good love story there between Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. I think Shirley MacLaine finally decides to leave uh, that affair. And Jack Lemmon finally decides to stand up for himself and not let the boss use his apartment for um, the affair and all that. 
So he kind of has a character, good character arc there. But Jack Lemmon is so great. Like I said, it's kind of a, there's some comedic moments definitely in there, but definitely uh, got some really dark moments too in there. So it's a good uh, combination. Uh, really fun movie. Uh, I say fun. Not not always fun, but it's got some fun parts to it. Um, really enjoy this one, The Apartment, at number seven. <clears throat> the last movie I'm going to talk about, number six on my list, is a uh, Western called The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. It came out in 1962. It's a John Ford uh, movie. Uh, probably the greatest Western director there was, um, starring uh, two juggernauts, uh, James Stewart and John Wayne, kind of two mains. And then you got Lee Marvin, who plays Liberty Valance, the title character. Uh, those three are so good together. And Lee Marvin's so good as a bad guy. He's one of the great bad guy characters, uh, actors, I think. Also have Vera Miles, the love interest. I have to add Vera Miles from the state of Kansas. So I always love seeing her name show up. I uh, always like, all right, someone from Kansas. Always want them to do well. Uh, anyways, and it's a uh, classic story of this uh, James Stewart playing a um, lawyer who comes to this town, and he gets robbed by Liberty Valance, and uh, he wants justice, but everybody's afraid of Liberty Valance, except for John Wayne, who's this rancher, who's a tough guy, of course. He's John Wayne. And so uh, James Stewart kind of gets into the politics of the town as a lawyer. He also teaches uh, English as he's kind of because he got injured during the, the robbery. So he's trying to rehabilitate, kind of uh, trying to get, uh, get back on his feet. And so he's repaying the town by um, teaching uh, a lot of them English. A lot of them don't know, don't know, or don't know how to read. I say English. Not read to read English because <laughs> they don't know how to read anyways. And so uh, and it kind of goes into him trying to find justice without violence against Lee Marvin against the Liberty Valance character. Anyways, and what's great about this movie, of course, besides the great acting by Stuart and Wayne and uh, Marvin, all great. Like, the best scenes are when those are those three guys are together. I mean, they make a really good scene. Uh, but I love how the ending, I'm going to spoil the movie a little bit, I guess, to say that I love the ending of, um, we see the Jimmy Stewart character kill Liberty Valance, um, which then... Um, really helps his career and he ends up becoming like a getting be a representative he becomes a hero to the town because of killing liberty valance and so then he becomes this uh uh representative of the of the of the district and then at the uh, of course at the beginning of the movie it's really him later on uh, looking back he's telling the story to a reporter so the whole movie is kind of a flashback told by this james stewart character and um He's telling them, you know, how you know he got how he got a start in politics, basically, because at that point he's like a U.S. senator, I think, and maybe even running for president. So he's uh, very, you know, doing very well politically, and it's kind of got a start because of this whole killing Liberty Valance and becoming a hero. And he tells a story, and you find out that he didn't really kill Liberty Valance; that the John Wayne character actually was the one who shot him, uh, but you didn't see him. He was kind of behind. Uh, behind a building or whatever and so he didn't see him behind shooting him and but he doesn't tell anybody he keeps that a secret um john wayne does and because I, I think because he knows that um the james stewart character can use that to help you know become you know represent the district and help the district because he definitely was more you know a politician he definitely would use that um platform to help out people and he was better at it than John Wayne character was. So John Wayne let him take the credit for it and get the glory and the honor and get to, you know, up his career. Even though it's kind of a detriment to his character, he ends up, because he's in love with Vera Miles, but Vera Miles ends up marrying the James Stewart character. So it's very heartbreaking for John Wayne's character. Um, even kind of makes him suicidal a little bit and all that. But he does all that for the better of the town and all that. So... Uh, and it was interesting that you get that reveal, and it's um, kind of shocking and um, that, that happened. And that uh, his whole career was based on a lie, but he's used that lie to help people. So it's like, is it okay to lie if you're helping people? There's that kind of conundrum, uh, moral conflict there that I really like about it. And I like at the end, he's t I mean, he's telling these, this reporter the real story that could hurt his career, but I guess he felt the need to, he's been living this lie this whole time, he wanted to tell somebody the truth, 
Anyway, so it tells him this report of the truth at the end, and there's the great line at the end where he tells, you know, the editor, you know, do I, you know, write the story? And, and the editor says, um, you know, print the legend, um, saying, like, you know, it's better to just print that lie uh, because it's come legend. It's come, you know, this, um, it's helped so many people that it's better just to print the legend. It's better that way for everybody than telling the truth. Anyway, so it's, it's an interesting ending. Um, anyways, but yeah, it's just a great Western and great acting, of course. And John Ford's one of the all-time great directors. So that's why I have number six, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. So that's my 10 through 6. Um, so next time I'll get to my top five favorite movies of the 1960s. So please comment. Let me know what you think about these movies. Um, what are some of your favorite movies of the 60s and all that. I'd love to see it. Um, just thank you for watching the video and liking it. Thank you to all the subscribers for supporting the channel. I appreciate you all. Have a good day.